I'm going to be making a split insert for an injection mold using a better technique than I used last time. Welcome to another episode. In a previous episode, I made this mold that had this split insert that was designed to allow me to have an undercut here. So when this is molded, the pin that comes out the back uh, is actually shaped like this when you're relative to the material. And one of the problems I had with this is that this was not exactly symmetric. So one side of this was a little bit, um, the circle was a little bit to one side rather than the other. And that meant that the circle came around and captured the part on one side. So it was a little harder to remove. So in this episode, what I'm gonna do is take a look at why that happened and a different way to create these inserts that gives me much better control over the accuracy and avoids the issue of the circles being off the center line. The, one of the problems that I had is you know, getting the width just right and the accuracy uh, to make sure that everything fit. And one of the reasons I had problems is because if we look at this, the, the back plate here, this one has the coordinate back there, which is good because this is the important surface right there. But if we look at the other one, you can see it has the coordinate back here, which means if the width here is not exactly correct, then it's not going to turn out correctly. It's not going to really fit together uh, properly. And it's important here because these are half circles that have a little bit of a, a draft to them. So if they're a little bit more than half a circle on one side and less than half a circle on the other side, it will stick in here. Working on the production mold, I suddenly had an idea, which is rather than mill them separately, I'm going to, first of all, mill them to width so they both have the same width, and I can check that uh, before I do the next step. Then the other thing I did is, in this setup, I included both the bodies as part of the setup. So that means I can put both of these two parts into the mill side by side and then mill them together as if they were a single part. So you can see the facing will be done as a single part, and then the contour will be done as if it's a single part as well. Now for the contour, what I needed to do is to select two contours. As you can see here, we have two boundary selections. The reason I need two is because each of these selections can only be done on one solid model. Now by doing two of them like this, where they're actually touching, so uh, Fusion treats them as a single boundary. And so you can see here that there's no break in the milling operation. So this is exactly what I want. I'm using the back center right here. So assuming that these two parts are the, are the same width or really close, what I can do is, is basically set the zero on one side and then move to the other side uh, find the zero there, and then get the middle, and then enter that into my controller. So that should move it here. Now that I have the Heimer on the left side of the two parts, what I want to do is look at the, uh, the value here and write that down. This is the X position for the left side. And then what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and do this, is move it away from there. And then I'm going to raise it up and then move across to the other side. And you can see that number is increasing and then go down. Bring it in slowly. And then for the last little bit. Okay, now that's set for the other side. So here we have 6.6618. Then I'll take uh, the, the first number, which is 
9.6645 and I'm ignoring the sign for the, the moment. And then I'm going to add the new number which is 6.6618 and then divide by 2 and that gives me the center position. So that means I should be able to go to offsets here to minus there and uh, type in negative, which is going down here, 8.1632 and then F1, press Y. Okay, so now this says 8.1632. And uh, that should be the center position now. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to move the Heimer over and uh, uh, out of the way, raise it up, and then uh, let me show you what happens. Uh, actually, let me just uh, move it here. So I'm just going to uh, move it by hand so that this says uh, 8.1632. Okay. I'd say that looks really close to center, but what I'm going to do now is change tools to a spot drill, and then I'm going to bring that down and have a look at that. Okay, so my uh, spot drill is uh, number four, uh, one quarter inch spot drill. So I'll go to uh, hand jog, press uh, T4, and then uh, ATC forward. Either ATC forward or ATC works correctly. So checking uh, that's still in the correct position. So what I'll do is I'll bring this down in uh, Z hand jog. You can see effectively that it's, it's uh, right on it. So that should work. Uh, let's give it a try. First is facing with this one inch diameter shell mill, which apparently uh, does not have the correct inserts for aluminum. So I'm going to need to find some. Then we have the drilling. I should say spot drilling, drilling, and then boring of the holes for the alignment pins that will be used to align these two separate pieces with the other parts of the mold. Have I said how much I love a tool changer? It certainly makes uh, these types of operations a whole lot nicer. Running a 1 8 inch diameter ball end mill at 30,000 RPM to cut the runner for the plastic to enter the mold. This is what it looks like when it's done. And uh, it's, I can see the line between them, but it's uh, looks pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna loosen this up, the vise that is. And <laughs> look at that. The, the coolant is uh, causing them to stick together. There we go. Perfect. This is the way it was in the mold before. Uh, I've got the, the runner here and the end of the, the, the cold plug on this side. So when I put it back in, I want to make sure that I flip it this way and put it in that way. And then I'm going to pick up this side, this side, and add, uh, divide by two after adding them to get the center again. This is the finished mold, and I can't show you what's on this side because the viewer who I'm making this mold for asked that I not.
but I can certainly show you this side. And this is where we have the split part that I just made and it fits perfectly into the mold. Because of the angles here, it means that these align this way. And in terms of the other alignment, there is a, an angle here on either side. So what happens when this goes in is now it's constrained in both directions and is aligned perfectly. As you can see from this episode, I'm constantly learning new things and coming up with uh, new ways or discovering new ways probably is more accurate to accomplish things that gives me better and better results. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I can't show you the results. As I mentioned, the viewer for whom I'm making this mold doesn't want me to show the actual product, but it works beautifully. The part does not stick on either of the inserts, which was the thing that I want to accomplish. So I'm very happy with the results. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.